Today, I'm flying Bonza's 737 MAX on their inaugural service out of Melbourne International Airport. Are they truly ready to take Australia's aviation scene by storm? Let's find out today and enjoy the festivities put on by the airline. A very warm welcome to Melbourne Airport Terminal 4 for today's inaugural service of Australia's newest airline, Bonza, which now has its name up around the terminal as you can see. Today is their first flight out of Melbourne International Airport, a massive day for the company as this will be its second base. Bonza's check-in is automated. You can also do this via the app or at the airport. Their bag drop located behind these machines are also automated too, something we're seeing very much now. The departure area is located on the second level, which is above check-in. A quick escalator ride will take you through to security, which was speedy if you were wondering. Once through security, you'll be greeted with a large open plan seating area, surrounded by several restaurants and shops from McDonald's to Asian diners, a porto and cafes. However, if this isn't to your fancy, there are also a host of vending machines for quick drinks and snacks that may interest you. Today, we are headed towards gate 19, and I'd say based off this sign, we are headed in the right direction. Two minutes, they're saying walking time, and today we are on board Bonza Flight AB1023, with service to the Sunshine Coast. Departure is scheduled for 09.30 in the morning. Gate 19 is part of the remote boarding gates at T4. This means we will be taking an escalator downstairs and eventually boarding the plane via the stairs. This is a big day for Bonza, so let's take in the celebrations and everything the airline is putting on for us to celebrate. Bonza had coffee for all, a selection of brownies too, and yes, your eyes aren't deceiving you, that is a brownie cake for breakfast at 7am. Refreshing orange juices were also available, something I'd recommend given just how rich brownies can be. Here is a Bonza care package featuring a beach towel, camera, cap, sunscreen and more, all ready for your holiday up north. Purple carpet will eventually lead us towards our plane, a lovely touch if I may add. As we approached boarding, the crowd grew and I was given a Bonza flag to celebrate the day. Here's me waving it to celebrate. This was totally my first attempt at trying to record this as of course you know I'm a professional flight reviewer. While we're here, let's mention that Jetstar is the primary user of Terminal 4 at the airport. Here's a peek of our plane today, but now it's time for the all-important media duties. Tim Jordan, who is Bonza's CEO, was present for the flight, addressing media. In addition, Melbourne Airport's CEO was also present, answering questions and talking about how much of a momentous day this was for everyone. Members of the parliament also featured. Now it's time to cut the care package. Oh wait. It's actually a cake. If you didn't catch on, don't worry. I actually didn't realize until they started cutting it that it was the cake. And my God, what an incredible cake. Next, it's time for the ribbon cutting ceremony. Smiles all round as mentioned for a big day at the airline. Let's now get ready to board the aircraft and start our Bonza journey. It's nice to see that the Bonza logo is featured throughout. While they are, of course, a brand new airline to the Australian aviation scene, it does feel like they already belong in Terminal 4, which for the airline, I'm sure you can't ask for much more. Boarding, as mentioned, is via the stairs. Today, we're flying on Baza, otherwise known as VHUIK, a Boeing 737-8, part of the MAX family. 
Bonza configures its 737s in an all economy class configuration. Pricing for the seats varies depending on where you wish to sit on the plane. Of course, with the rows furthest to the front of the plane being the most expensive on the aircraft, whereas at the back is the cheapest. All seats, as you'll be able to see, come with a padded headrest, which features the iconic B that is a thumbs up, which is the main branding for Bonza, where the rest of the seats are a darker grey slash black colour. A nice tone throughout the cabin, and as you'll begin to see throughout this journey, the purple is a really nice feature to Australian airports. There are overhead bins which offer space for those needing storage. Today, I'm in seat 9A. There's no IFE, but there is a reading area that features the safety card. Surprisingly, on top of a safety card, there's actually a USB port. Following that, a sticker that highlights how to order food. The tray table extends back and forth and is more than enough space for only a two hour flight. Bonza flights won't get much longer than this. Legroom could be cramped for some. I'm 5'10 and felt it a bit tight at times, but with that being said, it's only a two hour and cheap flight, so I think many of us can make do, but it's worth noting. Below the seat is your power plug. This is where you can charge your laptop devices and much more. Let's have a look at that headrest once more. You can see it is adjustable, it goes up and down, and the outer edges can fold inwards, which means it can grip your head. I honestly found these to be very, very comfortable, and they did help if you wanted to try and sleep. Above your seat, you have your reading lights, the air conditioning, and the button to ask the crew to come to your seat. There is a seat back pocket, which I must add I actually didn't like. It's only connected via the top, so if you place anything small in there, it will fall out the sides most likely, and this did happen to me. Here's my view. The flight was a busy one, but I must say it was largely filled with executives, media, and company employees. Definitely a different vibe to the flight. The window shade is your classic pull up and pull down, luckily not controlled by the crew. As the stairs were removed, it became evident how important this flight was for Bonza and Melbourne Airport, with key media all lining up to say goodbye. As an Australian, today was also a big day for us too. Following the collapse of Tiger Air, a low-cost airline in 2020, there was a hole in the market that needed to be filled. Many are excited by what Bonza will offer, and hope they can push down prices. Now, I'll be quiet and let you enjoy the takeoff. Let's say goodbye to the city of Melbourne for a day with a great view as well on offer of the outer suburbs of Melbourne. It really is amazing to see it from this high up. Bonza doesn't offer anything on its flight for free, but they offer an in-seat ordering system. You connect to their Wi-Fi, input your seat number, and select their food options. The menu is all Australian, that means no Pepsi Max or 7up for soft drinks, as these are locally sourced, which honestly, I do quite like about the airline. The USB power port was solid. In the two hour flight, I charged my phone from 20% to 100%, and sometimes we know how dodgy USB ports can actually be. Here's an example of the crew bringing the food to your seat with their iPad. You can pay via the app or when they arrive using credit card only. I picked up a large cola alongside two Anzac cookies for a combo deal of AUD 550. For those of you in the US, that's 368, which I thought was pretty reasonable, honestly. A reusable Bonza cup is also provided, although I may or may not have taken this home with me as I did really like the color on it. Now, let's sit back and enjoy the magic of flight.
as the LED lights turn white, it's time to cloud surf and approach the Sunshine Coast. So what better time now than to review the flight? I loved it. But to be fair, this was an inaugural and maybe not the most perfect indication of an overall experience you'd have on Bonza. I think value for money is certainly something that's there and can see it being a good option for families or those just wishing to go on holiday to certain destinations that are underserved. That is a big thing about Bonza. They're not looking to compete with Qantas, Jetstar or Virgin Australia. They're looking at flying into markets that don't already have established connections or are certainly underserved. I can see in certain instances where problems may arise. For example, the in-seat ordering seems logical and the way forward until you have a high influx of orders that the crew simply can't manage. Pair that with a single aisle plane and it proves tricky for navigating. The seat back pocket may be a little tricky to handle at times as well, but at the end of the day, these are only small things and for the low cost price point, they're things you can easily forego. At the end of the day, really all you want for flying within Australia is a seat and a decent price. Bonza is offering all that and a truly Australian experience and I loved it. And I would fly them again when you have so many other Australian airlines like your Qantas's and more offering flights for incredibly high prices. It's nice to see a low cost airline come in that really is trying to be there for all Australia as their slogan says. Thank you very much to Bonza for having me on board this flight. It was a pleasure and I can't wait to see the airline grow in the future. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.